voice this morning to speak to direct to release a word in time father we receive everything that you have for us in the name of the Lord Jesus amen praise God hallelujah praise Jesus amen amen put your hands together for Jesus just worship him thank him thank him thank him Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you. It takes your spirit for the people to come together. It takes your spirit for us to not just gather in numbers, but to gather in purpose, to gather in expectation, to gather with one heart. It takes your spirit for that to happen. So, Lord, we ask that let it be your Holy Spirit that governs the words today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Ecclesia Hills. Good morning. It's been a while. It is good to be back. I greet you all. Um, Pastor Moses, you know I love you. Good to see you. <laughs> Today we're talking about new beginnings and I strongly believe that this is the word of the Lord to many of us in this room. Not just because we have crossed into a new year, but also because we have crossed into a new year. God does not decide what he will do in humanity based on the calendaring system of men. But God does, but God uses our calendar to execute the things he wants to do. I hope you, you see the difference. His decision is not based on our calendar, but he uses our calendar as a tool to achieve the things he wants to do because God is consistent, consistently unveiling and revealing himself and he uses time as an instrument of revelation. So in as much as we have come into a new year, the things that are embedded in the new year are not decided based on the calendar that says a new year has come, but they have been pre-decided from the foundation of the world. So we are merely explorers of the divine story of God that he formed even before humanity began. We are explorers of the eternal will of God that is made manifest within the fabric of time and the earth's space. So the greatest thing that a man can do for himself is to get into the habit and also make it a culture of searching and exploring and understanding the mind of God. The Bible says it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. That means when God conceals, it is because God wants to bring forth glory. Without a concealing of the mind of God, there is no glory of God that is revealed. So if you say, Lord, we want your glory, basically you are saying, Lord, we want the things that you have covered but the bible says it is the honor of kings to search it out the word for honor is the same word for glory and it's the hebrew word kabod so when you say it is the kabod of god to conceal a matter but it is the kabod of kings to search out the matter so when god seems to hide himself from you when god seems to cover a thing and does not permit you to see into it maybe because he has covered and shielded it you Using the instrument of time and calendar, it is because God has got a reserved glory that he wants you to come into. But there is a certain kind of people that access the concealed things of God. The Bible says it is kings. That's why Jesus did not only make us priests unto himself, but he also made us kings. That means to be a king does not only mean that you are sitting on a throne, but to be a king means that you have the capacity to open the things that are locked and the things that are veiled to people. So that means part of your kingship embedded within the office of your kingship is the capacity to unveil hidden things and to open the things that are covered. Not just the things that are covered by men, but the things that are covered by Elohim, the great and mighty God. That means there is something about the office of a king that makes him a forerunner. Not just because he was given a title and a position, but because his throne is constantly consistently um, um, honored or he comes into the place of honor or his throne is preserved in honor by his ability to consistently search out God. The glory of a king is in his ability to search. 
a king recognizes that when the Lord covers 2023, it is not because the Lord is mean or does not want you to know his mind. It is because if he opens everything from the beginning, you have no opportunity to enter glory. It says it is the glory of kings when they search out. Make it a habit to search. Make it a culture to search. Make it your life's desire to be an explorer of the divine things of God. Are we together this morning? It is honorable in the heavens when a man searches. When you talk about new beginnings, it literally speaks of a new cycle. It says a new beginning. That means it's starting all over again. Beginning in itself speaks about newness. So when you say something begins, it means something is new. So to say new beginning almost sounds like new, new. Does it make any sense? So it's almost like God is making the new, new. So the thing that yesterday to you was like, wow, God is making it wow, wow, wow. So I don't know what you experienced in God before. I have served the Lord consistently now. Let's remove the days on the street. But consistently for 20 years. And I can tell you that there is always a wow in the Lord. There is always a time when you go on your knees and it feels like your heart wants to explode because of the thirst and the hunger and the panting in your inside. There is also always something new in God. You just need to hold the instrument of his word and use it as the compass to find him. So he says, I'm doing new, new things, new, new things, new, new things. The question is why? Why do you have to do something new if the old is still working? You know, he's doing something new because the old was not sufficient. He's doing something new because the old is not enough. He's doing something new because the old is not a full explanation of the story. He's doing something new because the old does not show the length and breadth of his intentions towards you. He's doing something new because there is yet more that he wants to give to you, that he wants you to come into. So God himself is the womb of all beginnings. That's one thing we must remember. So when we hear new beginnings, we think about new jobs, new houses, relocation, um, new friends, new opportunities, new connections. So when they say God is doing something new in your life, you're like, amen. You see the new boo, glory to Jesus. But when he says something new, you have to remember that the concept of new is embedded in God. So there is no new thing that is born that can receive context and relevance outside of the knowledge of the king himself. So anything new that comes into your life or that should come into your life should be rooted in God himself. Now the Bible declares in Revelations, Revelation, sorry, not like Revelations, Revelation, two, um, Revelation 21 from verse 5 to 7, it says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and I am Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. In this verse, verses of the Bible, the Lord begins to show us that he, he is not just the one that makes things new. He says, I am the beginning. I am the end. And I need you to understand this. You know, one day I, I was praying and I was going through a season I was trying to overcome something. And I thought, Lord, will this ever end? Lord, will this ever end? And as I was crying and praying, the Lord said to me, he said, do you remember I am Alpha and Omega? And I said, yes, God, I know, but I have a feeling that if you don't do something quickly, I, I don't think I'll be able to hold on to the standards of my faith like I should. I don't think I'll be, as I said that, the Lord said, do you remember 
that I am the author and finisher of your faith. He said, the, the, the faith you have, the power in which you walk, the anointing that you carry, I authored it. I wrote it into the fabric of time and I wrote it into the heavens. I instructed the angels that walk with you even before you were born. He says, I am the author. He says, why would you think that I will begin a thing that I will not finish? He said, you will run your race and you will finish it. He said, the, your concern should be, how should I run? Where should I run to? With whom should I run? He said, the question is not whether or not you will finish. I need you to understand that God is the beginning. There is nothing that begins that begins outside of God. Even the trials of Job was in God. <laughs> Satan is not smart enough to make God begin a cycle. It's impossible. So when he came strolling, and God says, have you considered my servant Job? God was baiting him. Everything is in the Lord. And the Lord permits circumstances and situations to give us opportunities for promotion as he trains us in the art of judgment. So the situations are not necessarily, oh, this happened to me. Look at my badge of pain. No, they are tutelage. The Lord is training you in the art of judgment. Because what use is a king that has no knowledge on how to judge? How can we reign and rule with him for all eternity if we have not been schooled in the academy of judgment? So the things you go through in life are merely lessons you are just going through a workbook that is preparing you for something greater in eternal life. Because without eternal perspective, it is impossible to understand the cycles of this life. You will misjudge the cycles of life. So eternity gives us perspective concerning why things begin again and again. Now, when I was preparing for the sermon, I had a dream some days ago. And I did not understand the dream until this morning. So until this morning after praying, I had a completely different, very academic sermon, which I believe was full of power and the Holy Ghost. And then after praying, I thought, yeah, you know, I got my sermon figured out. You know, I'm just going to try to interpret my dream now, you know. And in the middle of interpreting that dream, I was like, Wait a minute, like it was right in there, the symbol new beginnings was right in the dream. I was like, why did I not see that God was telling me about new beginnings? The dream was long, long. It was like, you know, um, all these Chinese episodes on Netflix that has like 62 episodes. So it was quite long, but the, the part that I can share is, you know, at some point I was given a lot of goods and... Um, I was told to take it to a particular location, but in the midst of it, there was torment everywhere outside, so I couldn't run outside, I couldn't go anywhere, and I was like, what's going on in the world? What is all of this? Everything was falling apart, demons were around, in the streets. I was like, Lord, and then I ran into this place that looked like some kind of hotel where they were keeping people that were running from um, what was going on outside, and as I entered, I said, you know, and they said, uh, Pastor again. I said yes they said take we have a key for you and they gave me the key and I looked on the key holder it was room 368 and so I ran out upstairs with all the things looking for the room door and then I found my room door the other part is story for another day and so while I was trying to interpret this dream I knew it was so relevant because I saw some other numbers and you know when you wake up from a dream remembering the core details is because the Lord is speaking so I woke up and I knew it was relevant. I have a key to room 368. What does it mean, Lord? So of course, I brought out my dream dictionary. I brought out my prophet's dictionary. I brought out everything. I'm praying. And I'm looking at it. And three literally speaks about God, the Trinity, the fullness of the spirit, the divine. And six speaks about humanity, man, our nature, you know, all of these things that makes us man, flesh. But eight is the number of new beginnings. And immediately I understood that what God was saying to me is that the only way that God can bring you 
from your humanity into the new things that he has for you in this season is that you take this key and open that door. There were other things in the door which is for me. And immediately I remember, I realized eight is new beginnings. I was like, oh my gosh, you were already speaking about this sermon last week. And so while I was preparing something else, it didn't dawn on me that there was a connection. I probably should have started interpreting this dream the moment I saw it. And I would have arrived at the sermon much earlier. Why am I saying this? So I began to study it again. The number eight represents new beginnings. And you get this. Usually in scripture, you have to go back to the law of first mention. You have to go back to the time it first occurred to be able to get the foundational explanation of what a key and a symbol means. And so you see eight coming to play um, after God created the world in six days and he rested on the seventh day. And so the eighth day became what? A new cycle of life. So this is foundationally where eight begins as um, being explained as new cycles, new beginnings, um, new living, you know, um, new open doors for people to come into. But the word eight in itself is, itself is the Hebrew word shamein, which means many things but can be summed up into three major headings. Number one, it can be summed up to me, I hope you're right. I know there's YouTube, but there's something about writing that helps you retain information. So when I listen to YouTube sermons, I actually write. I'm listening to somebody's YouTube sermon, and I'm writing down what they are saying. So when you hear people say things, it does not happen simply because they listen. So write. I know you are great. I know you are powerful. I know you are worth two billion, but write. I'm the one holding the microphone, so write. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we do that? If you can write, put up your hand. You went to school. You passed A, B, C. You will write. Thank you, Jesus. The pastor of the church is writing. Who are we not to write? So it's the Hebrew of Shamein, S-H-A-H-M-E-Y-N, which means many things, but we can sum up to number one, super abundant and satiating. Number two, abounding in strength. Number three, to make fat or to cover with oil. Number one, super abundant and satiating. So this means that when the Lord begins to speak about new beginnings, part of the things he wants to introduce into your life and he wants to introduce into the season of your life is some sort of abundance that is satiating. Now, number two, he wants to make sure that you are abounding in strength because it is impossible to engage with the activities and engage with the assignment of the new season if you don't have the needed strength. And then number three, he wants to make you fat or cover you with oil just like Isaiah 6 to 1 that says the spirit Isaiah 6 that says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me because you cannot break the chains you cannot open the doors you cannot come into the abundance and you cannot come into God's restorative agenda if you don't enter into the fatness of the anointing now when Jacob was talking to when um, Isaac was talking to Esau remember we shared that scripture when we're talking about gates, gates and dominions and um, Isaac said to him, Esau was begging and saying, Jacob has taken all of the blessings. I don't seem to have the grace. I don't seem to have the capacity of the covenant anymore. And Isaac said to him, he says, in the day that you gain the dominion, the yoke shall be broken from your shoulder. And he said to him, another version says, in the day that you grow fat, the yoke will be broken from your neck. So basically, Esau, you have come into another cycle of life where you are no longer the one that is the promised um, covenant carrier. You have been shifted away from your place by reason of your error in judgment, by reason of your inability to discern that there was a promise that was waiting for you in this season. You could not see it. You could not pay the necessary price to enter into it. You have missed purpose. You have missed timing. Therefore, you have come into a place where it almost seems like you have lost grace. He says but I can tell you something if something happens to you you will be able to recover not exactly what you were supposed to get but at least some portion of destiny. He says what you need is the oil. What you need is to grow fat. What you need is the fatness of the spirit. He says if this happens to you the yoke of um, I'm not being able to produce or increase it shall be broken from of you. 
kind of new beginnings is that you receive the capacity to break the yoke of previous seasons. The things that seemed impossible for you to step out from before, you receive the ability to break them and to step out of them. You become abounding in strength. But there is a way that these things happen. There is a way you enter the spirit realm to be able to pull down the resources of the season. I was teaching them a couple of days ago about how God, the Bible began to declare in Second Peter, about how God, the divine one, through Jesus Christ, has given unto us great and exceeding promises. And through those promises, he makes us also partakers of his divine nature and I was sharing with them about the fact that God's desire is to bring us into a place where we manifest divinity and within the concept of divinity and many things it is possible for you in divinity to realize what your divine estate is, what your divine portfolio is, what your divine assignment is and I said but you don't come into the power that is in the divine life until you have first entered into a understanding the promises that are within Jesus Christ who is the vehicle with which God conveys all things unto us and I said you cannot enter the blessedness of the new season you cannot enter your divine portfolio for 2023 until you first enter into the exceedingly great and precious promises that are embedded in Jesus the things that God wants to give to you the oil that will strengthen the divinity within you, that will make manifest the divine nature within you, you cannot have it until you first look to Jesus. There is no need preaching this sermon if I don't first bring you back into the memory of Christ. Because I found out that many times in church, we teach a lot of things. We teach a lot of things, but outside of Jesus, outside of the centrality of his lordship, Outside of the centrality of his power, outside of the centrality of his rules, his, res his rules and his ways. And so you cannot enter anything that you see in scripture until you enter through the door of Jesus. So when you hear him say, I am the way, the truth, the life, we think he's only the way of salvation. He's the way of everything. There is no entering into any spiritual portfolio without entering Christ. There is no entering into any spiritual promise without entering Christ. I don't want you to hear this sermon with your Christianese born again for 50 years mind. I need you to hear this sermon with your spirit. Because as I'm preaching it, you are thinking about salvation and crusade. But that's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about the things that are reserved for you to execute in this year. I'm talking about the pain and the heart and the betrayals you will go through and how in the midst of it there is a dimension of Christ reserved are you still with me there is a Jesus in everything he fills all things by him all things consist there is Christ in the midst of your greatest trouble there is Christ in the midst of the scandal that has been unleashed against you there is Christ in the midst of that money that you lost if you can find the Jesus in the midst of it his position, his mindset, his way. This is how you are then able to break into the anointing concerning that matter and that season that enables you to execute judgment. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the way. I told a group of people recently, I said, study every word that came out of the mouth of Christ. And yesterday morning, one of my people from Kenya sent me an audio, I said, P.I., I was able to download every word that Jesus said in the New Testament. As I was playing it, I replied to her, I said, this is the best thing anybody has given me this year. Every word of Jesus. So I'm playing it, and I'm listening to my master. I'm not just listening to him to cram scriptures. I'm listening to understand how he thinks, how he evaluates, how he decides, how does he judge? How does he imagine? How does Jesus lead? Because if you can see Christ beyond a man that died for you, and you can see Christ as a culture, as a life, as a perspective, and as a mindset, there's nothing you cannot conquer. What is missing is Jesus. 
What is missing from that equation is Christ. Many times we don't want him. Many times we actually don't want him. We want power. We want breakthrough. We want new things. But we don't want the new one. <laughs> this morning, for one minute, bow your head. I want you to say with me again, Jesus, I know that you are Lord. I confess that you are Lord. Above the circumstances and conditions of my life, you rule. Once again, I declare that my heart belongs to you. The territories of my heart belong to you. Therefore, let all that is within me praise you. Let all that is within me bow to your government. Amen. We must over and over and over again make these declarations because the last thing you want is to arrive at the gate of heaven be led in but be told by the master I don't know you dwell in eternity in all darkness because you were never mine I was teaching them during prayer reign about the system of the scorpion and the serpent. And I said that these are two spiritual systems that the kingdom of hell uses to derail, deceive believers. We are still on new beginnings. And I said to them, Luke 10, they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, this is a new beginning. You sent us out to cast out demons. And the demons tremble at your name. They came out of people. Pastor Fred, we are still struggling with demon casting. Jesus had not died. Jesus had not resurrected. The Jesus that gave them power was the Jesus that was still in human flesh. I need you to understand. Demon casting is one zero zero of Christianity. The Jesus that gave the, the disciples that casted out demons was it Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was 70. We don't even know their names. And Jesus said to them, go, in my name, tell the demons to come out. What name? Not even Jesus the Christ. Jesus, the son of Mary and Joseph. Remember, he was not yet revealed to these guys. They didn't know him. They couldn't define him. Peter had not yet said, you are the anointed... So they just went. They saw demon possessed people. Come out in Jesus' name. And demon's like, wait, Jesus. Uh, uh, Jesus, his mother's name is Mary. Father's name is Joseph. Out! And the demons came running out of them. And the guys were like, wow! Power and authority! And they ran to the next person. Come out in the name of Jesus! And they came out and they ran back to Jesus. They were happy singing. They were like, Jesus, Jesus, look at it. And Jesus said, why are you rejoicing? He said, don't rejoice because the demon. <laughs> ah! I love my master. Bad guy. Bust your bubble. Humble you. Give you perspective onto eternity. He said, don't rejoice because demons are coming out. He said, I have already seen Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You are rejoicing that you kicked a man that is already down. You are rejoicing that you conquered an enemy that has been destroyed. He said, what are you rejoicing about? He said, don't rejoice yet. He said, but listen to me. I have given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and they shall by no means harm you. He says, rather let your rejoicing be that your name is written in heaven. Ah! 
So it is possible to open blind eyes, raise the dead, do all the works. And do you know what it means for your name to be written in heaven? You have been marked into the history of the heavens. You are not just known as an earthling that existed, but you were able to break through the fabric of humanity, enter divinity, pass through the manipulation of principalities and powers, and you entered into the ranking of divine ones. He says, that should be your rejoicing. Because any man that believes in me can cast out demons. But belief is not enough. What did your belief strengthen you to do? What posture of heart and mind did your belief cause you to take? Don't be a demon slayer that is wicked and manipulative. Don't be a demon slayer that has unforgiveness consistently in his heart. A demon slayer that is always looking for something bad that everybody has done. He says, you will slay the demons, but you will have no place in eternity. Listen, as we cry out for new beginnings, this is the new beginning. It begins from within. Because the Bible says that the structures a man builds are not greater than the man himself. Many of us define our identity by the things we build. But we forget that the things we build cannot define us. So as you are talking about new beginning, I'm not talking about activity. Because you see, many of us are trying to do for identity. But Jesus said, don't work for identity, work from identity. If you are working for identity, listen, Satan will deceive you. He will, what did he tell Jesus? I can give you the kingdoms. So if my identity as one that is called and anointed by God is in the things that I do, and people say, wow, great woman of God, I'm finished. Because Satan can set me up for progress in ministry. <laughs> Are you with me? Kelendo Boska Fende Vende High. The garden of 2023, we will manage it well. Now, between, don't rejoice that you cast out demons and your name is written in heaven. There is a condition in the middle of those two things. What is the condition? He said, no. I have given you power, authority over snakes and scorpion. My brother, I beg, what in concerns scorpion? Concerns this where they talk. Sometimes Jesus will just pass left. And you are saying, if I told them, I said, if Jesus removed that part and just said, don't rejoice that you cast out demons, but rejoice that your name is written in heaven, it will make sense, right? He now embedded something in the middle to confuse everybody. But it's not confusion, it is truth. And I started speaking to them about the activities and the systems of the scorpion and the snake. When you go back into scripture, you would realize that for every time the scorpion or the snake was mentioned, it was associated with activities that had to do with things like betrayal, lies, poisonous words spoken against somebody, deceit, lust, enticement, seduction. When you look at the activities of the snake and the scorpion, stay with me. You would see it as a pattern throughout scripture. And every great man that ever attempted to do anything for God, this system rose up against him to derail him, to corrupt him, to pervert him, so that that man never arrived at the full stature of Christ within him when he was done with his works. Look at something. Seduction. Look at David, poisonous words, betrayal, all over the Bible, everybody who sought to do God's work. Jesus said to them, don't rejoice, that demons. He said, this one is your biggest problem. <laughs> this is the one that can ensure your name is not written in the book. If you cannot know, know that the serpent is consistently against you, you will miss it. And this serpent I'm talking about, ah, you can try to get the message of prayer in. I can't explain it fully here. Because I was explaining to them about the serpent and the scorpion. How they are always close to your leg. They are always near the heel of man. That's why the God said, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and the serpent shall bruise his knee, his heel. So there is something about your feet that is connected to the activity of the scorpion and the serpent. 
And I said to them, the feet is the infrastructure by which God carries dominion through the world. So when God gave man the dominion mandate and said, multiply, subdue the world and do all these things, where did God embed that capacity for man to do it? Because God was giving them the instruction in the garden. So there was no way man could execute dominion there because he had to go out. Jesus again said, go into the whole world. How do you go? You walk your feet. So the feet is not a physical thing. It's actually a spiritual infrastructure by which dominion is propagated. It is inside of the spirit of humanity. We have dominion. We have feet inside us. Feet is what gives you ideas and initiative. Feet is what gives you imagination on how to take nations. Feet is what tells you how to walk around your business so that you enter multiplication. Feet is what puts you in the offices of kings and nobles. It is your feet system within you that enables you to dominate. Are you with me? So Jesus said for to them, Satan is coming for your you must overcome. Because what he does, I explained to them recently, I said, he moves from tempting your feet because he is the serpent, he likes the dust. And man is made from the dust, so he likes the flesh. The dust speaks about the flesh, your body. So he likes it when you are carnal. You become a prey for him to take. The scorpion and the serpent can bite you when you are in your carnality. And so he will first track you and then it stings. Remember all the attributes of the serpent and the scorpion. It will sting you with betrayal, with lies, with deceit, with the spirit of fear, anger. These are all the things that the scorpion and the snake represent. And then it waits for its venom to enter your system. So that even though you were beaten by the snake, you now become a carrier of the life of the snake. And when the venom is in your system, through prayer, intercession, and repentance and confession, if you don't cast it out through these measures, you become somebody that carries the venom and you are then venomous to the rest of the body of Christ. Are you still with me? Jesus said, if you can overcome this system, I can guarantee you, you have a place in heaven. Because this rulership I'm giving to you, it's not just about cast out demon. You will do mighty things. That one is a small thing. But do you have my nature in you? Even though he is beaten, insulted, yet he did not feel the need to promote his own agenda. Even though they looked down on him, though he was the master of the world, he did not feel the need to call down a legion of angels just to prove to them. Can you overcome the pride that rises from the venom of the viper? Why am I saying this to you? God has said to you now, new season, new cycle. Waiting at the door of every new season of adversaries. Apostle Paul began to say it in Corinthians. He says a great and effective door is open unto me. But there are many adversaries there. Access does not mean entry. That God has given you access does not mean you enter. There are many people that we get to December 2023 but never experience 2023. <laughs> the promises, the grace, the power. The anointing, the victories in God, they never came into it. Why? Because they did not conquer the adversaries at the door of the season. This is why it is important that you sow this month to God. Give it as a seed. You are still eating morning, afternoon, night. Food that you have been eating since the day they gave birth to you. You can't stop it for one month. One out of twelve. I'm not saying fast only in January. I'm not religious. I'm not traditional. But I'm spiritual. And I'm telling you that the beginning is as important as the end. <laughs> you have to enter. You have to tear inside well. I said to some people, I said, 10 spies went at the junction of a new beginning and came back. They all said the same thing. I need you to hear me. All of them prophesied the same thing. Because who are the spies? The ones that go into the future to come back and give you a report of what God wants to do. It's like the prophetic. They came back and said, yeah, the land is beautiful. As the Lord said, it is flowing with milk and honey. 2023 is powerful. God is going to do so many great things. The hand of the Lord is upon us. They said everything. 
But there was something different about what the eight said and what two said. Eight said the same thing, but said, we can't take it. But two said, we can. We can kill the giants. Based on the discouragement of the eight, the whole camp was filled with discouragement. When we began the sea, I started to teach about the power of divination. And I warned everybody, be careful of diviners and divination. Divination is not the absence of spirituality. Understand me. Diviners enter the same spirit realm you are entering. But what they come back with and what they produce in humanity is different. Are you with me? And I said that a Christian that likes spirituality and spiritual things but hates the price that he has to pay to become part of that which he beholds is a Christian that can easily fall into divination. Because you don't want to learn the standards, the values by which you can judge whether a spiritual thing is God but you want to be in the midst of it. You can easily be deceived by the spirit of divination. And I said, this year is a very spiritual year. This year is a marker year. This year is a deciding year. This year, God is anointing and enthroning people all over, even in ministry. And God is dethroning many. But you see, the problem is, if you are still in that gang that is chasing after, ah, I heard this person has power. You don't go there. You don't ask yourself first. What is this power by which they are operating? Go back into scripture. Find the word of the Lord by which you can defend what it is and pray in it and pray through it and test your own heart. Would the Lord have me be partaker of this divine estate that this person is manifesting? If you don't walk circumspectly this year, you will fall into the power of divination and the end thereof is a loss of mind. Are we still together? I say this to you because in this new season, there are many things that the Lord wants to do. As I close, I will just share markers of the new beginning so that you, can, you will know what to expect of God and you will know when these activities start to happen that the Lord is in the midst of you. In Matthew 28, verse 1 to 8, it's the story of Jesus' resurrection, a new beginning. It says, in the end of the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath marks the end of a cycle. Now, after the Sabbath had ended, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, new cycle. It says, came Mary Magdalene and, other, and the other Mary. I don't know why they always call her the other Mary. May I not be called the other Isi? Karamashanteka. I have son name. Came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Imagine, you just say, me, we'll go look. Next day, everywhere started to shake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the gatekeepers did shake and became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the women he answered they didn't ask any question the bible only said they went to see then when the angel came the bible said he answered that means your anticipation is a question to heaven your hunger is a question to heaven Every time you are like, Elabosha, Jesus, I want more of you. You don't need to know the more. I just want more. It's a question that heaven needs to answer. He says, and answered the women and said unto them, fear not. Why not go fear? You look like nightmare. You shook the ground, but it's okay. He said, he said to them, fear not. For I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here for his reason. As he said, he said, and I said, come, see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring, bring his disciples the word. 
One thing that you must know about new beginnings, number one, is that new beginnings are born by the predetermined counsel of God. It wasn't the women that triggered that season. It was always God. Remember, the Bible says the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. 2023 is not our idea. Nigeria 2023 is not our idea. I need it to sink in. You see this election? Plus the ones that it come and the ones it did not come. Everybody, it's not their idea. There is nothing that happens on the earth that has not first been seen by the God of the heavens and the earth. This revelation will be your source of peace. Now, the new beginnings are born out of the predetermined counsel of God. Then, the things that God works in time and the anticipation of hungry men. This is what causes new beginnings to come forth. The things he has predetermined. The things that he lays for us in each season. And hungry men that step into those things and say, Lord, thy will be done. You've heard prophecies this year, I said to some people. What have you done with them? There's almost no prominent pastor or prophet that has not released a word. How has it empowered you to decide the next stage of your business? How has it influenced your investment for 2023? We have become like the diviners. Eh? We hear prophecy for sh 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 just spooky. You know, we have this whole portmanteau where we gather spiritual prophecy, strong worship, high praise. We gather all those things. And then we drop the portmanteau and then we go and live our lives as we want to. The predetermined counsel of God. Okay, why did nobody hear the two guys that we are saying we can take the land? We can take the land. Why did they not sit down to say, okay, Joshua, Caleb, is there a strategy? They could have been 30 something years earlier. There are some delays in your life that is a product of your inability to work with predetermined counsel. Have faith in God. When was the last time you moved? Because the Lord said to you, even though you had no proof that it was going to happen, but you moved. Even though you had no assurance, but you based the next phase of your work on what the Lord said to you. What have we done with the prophecies? You have seven years left. Some of us will still use our money to buy first class tickets and come back and be begging your uncle for house rent. Why? You will not save. Some people will still not buy farms. Some people will still not structure the future so that by 3030, you are not a prey to the Antichrist system. Some people will see the prophecy and say, oh, God forbid, I bet which kind of prophecy be this? I bet I don't feel for anything when they fear me. No problem. No one shouted for many years. A, a storm is coming, rain is coming, flood is coming. No one, I beg, I beg all this propaganda, all these people that used to propagate fear. No problem. No wahala. How about you enter the word, pressing men that give themselves? to the word of the Lord that is released. This is how new beginnings are formed. So what many people have is new year, not new beginning. Happy new year, finish. No cycle. No breaking of the bond and captivity of a previous season. But I know that in the Lord it is possible to enter the new beginning. The second thing about new beginnings is that God raises witness of the new witnesses of the new season? Witnesses. Can you identify the people that the Lord? Hmm. 
please, I beg you. You know, I was reading Revelation today, Pastor Booms. And I saw when Jesus was speaking about the people that have a place in the lake of fire. He didn't say they will go to hell, Pastor Fred. He said they have a place. That means they don't cut your own land. You understand? According to your life, they've arranged all the suffering for you. So you are not a random soul that fell into hell. You get my, you have a place. Do you know the first thing that God mentioned? Do you know the first thing Jesus mentioned? He said the fearful. The fearful. Hi. When I saw it, I feared. Then I remembered the fearful. You understand? <laughs> it's the first category. And I said, Lord Jesus, I don't understand. You understand what I'm saying? I said, why would the fearful? He said, I'm not talking about people whose heart at different times trembled. He says, I'm talking about people who by nature, their configuration, their decision making, their life is governed by the spirit of fear. He says, God has not given us spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Guess what? The fearful, they don't have soundness of mind. Soundness, a lack of sound mind does not mean you decrease. Because there's something I see on Instagram which sounds foolish but profound. Many are mad, but few are roaming. And the truth is, it's not everybody that is mad that does not have sound mind. There are people that are well-dressed, that are leading organizations, but they don't have sound mind. The measurement of sound mind is not creativity and innovation. The measurement of sound mind is godly judgment. He says, if you are fearful, you don't have sound mind. Number two, they are not loving people. I'm not saying nice. I'm not saying they say pleasantries. Because you can be pleasant for the sake of manipulation. You can be pleasant because of what you will get. I'm saying love. Go back to Corinthians. Then the last thing, it says they don't have power. I'm not saying they don't have influence. But I'm saying they don't have the capacity to combat demonic systems. So they easily give themselves to them. You never rise up in opposition to satanic policies. Anything you are the first to comply. Government is always right. Anything they say, you have carried your boy to go and turn him to girl. The fearful. There's no way a person is a fearful man or a fearful woman by nature that they will not make mistakes and they will not do demonic things. Impossible. Are we still together? So, I say this because the new beginnings raises, in new beginnings, God raises witnesses of the new season. Please, don't be fearful. Look for people who are witnesses of the new season. In a new season, it shocks the world. In the season of 2020, God placed the word of the season in the mouth of a couple of people. It shocked the world. It took people who thought they were established by storm. The whole world turned and faced a group for direction. I said there is a witness of a season. We have crossed again. Can you identify the witnesses of the season? Who is a witness? They speak not of themselves. They have access into the deep truths of God. They do not only tell you there are giants in the land, but they give you strategies to take down the giants. In your season, God raises preachers and teachers. But God also releases apostolic oil to break ground, to open places that you may enter into it. God raises witnesses. Tell the Lord, Father, make me your witness in this new beginning. Make me your witness in this new season. Do not let me be a witness of the former day. Do not let me be a witness of the former season. I'm not praying for you. I'm praying for myself. You so pray for yourself. Do not let me be a witness of the former season. Don't let me glory in the things that I once knew. But give me a heart that can press for the things that should be. Break any cultural, traditional, canal thinking on the inside of me 
that keeps me glued to the normal ways. But Father, put inside of me the ability and the vulnerability to accept the new. In the name of Jesus. A new seed, new beginnings are usually marked by events that shake the earth. However, this earth-shaking events usually are also a sign of the release of new dimensions of God. He says that the earth shook when the angel came down. He says all the keepers, they fell as though they were dead, Godwin. All the men fell and their spirit left them, but only the women were standing. All the keepers and guards, they fell as though they were dead. But Mary and the other Mary, they were still there. What gave them the capacity to bear the earth-shaking event? They were witnesses. They were already carrying Christ in their heart. What will mark this season is that we're going to see earth-shaking events. Don't plan in the flesh. Plan by filling yourself up with the nature of the one that shakes. So that when the shaking happen, you will be among those that will abide. It's not by power, it's not by might. By all means, the men were stronger than those two women. But they fell, and it was as if they died. They fainted, but the women did not faint at the presence of the angel. Why? They carried Christ inside of them. Another thing about new beginnings is that during new beginnings, there are usually open doors between heaven and earth for increased spiritual engagement. This happens. These are usually marked by signs and wonders, supernatural encounters, especially angelic encounters, and supernatural trade routes are open in the heavenly realms. Every time new beginnings were about to happen, you see Jacob at Peniel and Bethel. You see Moses at the burning bush before he went to meet Pharaoh. You see it consistently. Jesus at, the, at Gethsemane, the angel came every time. A new day is about to come. Spiritual activities increase. So when you begin to have more dreams in the season, when you fall on your knees to pray, and the heavens open, and you start to see visions, there's a reason why. It is because you are at the beginning. So God needs to increase you, fill you up, and give you everything that you need for the journey ahead of you. It's called bread. So maximize it. Because there's a time when it closes. That dimension of operation closes. Are you still with me? So maximize the now. Another thing that happens in new beginnings is that they usually come with fresh access to God's finished works and promises. Fresh access to God's finished work and promises. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost that God had been promising them sees the Old Testament with new leaves, stammering tongue, they will speak. It finally came in Acts chapter 2. Why? A new beginning. There are fresh dimensions of God that is about to be released in this season. Keep your eye on it. At new beginnings, a new message is also released over the body of Christ and over the world. The Lord said to me, you see, this is the year of the great shift and it's the year of the rise of my builders. And I say it everywhere I go. I'm telling you, there are major shifts that are going to happen this year, but you must put yourself into the place where you understand the transitions of the heavens so that you will not make transitions like the world will make, but you can make transitions as God will make. But in the midst of all this shifting, the Lord is also raising people who know how to build. I beg you, this is not the year where you take your internal structures for granted. This is not the year where you take even personal and internal government for granted. This is the season where you go back and evaluate your, your companies, evaluate your businesses, evaluate your ministries. You go back and you begin to learn how to steward even your spiritual gifts carefully because the Lord is calling us to raise jars and the Spirit of God says in the next seven years, I'm going to fill the jars. He says, but the jars that you bring determine the amount of oil you will carry. And there is a way in which God prepares the jars. He begins to call you into effective administration.
administration. He begins to call you into system building. He begins to call you into legacy establishment. I don't care if you're 21 or 16 years. It is time to rise up in the spirit of a builder and cry out to the God of Aholiab and Bezalel. Cry out to the God of Noah who gives dimensions and specifications for the structures that he wants built. The Lord is saying shift. This is not the year to say, you know, I have depression, I have anxiety, I have paralysis, I have madness, I have crazy. Have... Please, it's okay. Kelemus Kampia, Sanfe to Kapa, go a war, 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 war. Push the hand of Satan. These things I say to you, I'm not saying them because I have not experienced all these things. If you know me very well in my personal life, I have struggles like every other man, and I give God praise for my struggles. Because my struggles are my opportunities for victory and mastery. So I preach to you the Jesus that I have handled. I preach to you the solution giver. I preach to you the deliverer of men. The one that goes into darkness and rescues my soul from captivity. He calls me out of tombs when they say, by now she's thinking. The Lord says, call her out, remove the grave clothes. It's his stand before me. I am telling you that it is possible. There is nothing that Jesus cannot solve. Nothing. Quest for your wholeness. Don't make excuses when the anointing is available. Don't make excuses. God does not need a PR manager. Yeah, even though, but sometimes a lot, forget it, pray. 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 I'm serious. Pray. We don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray. We pray like flower. Beautiful, majestic, wonderful. Are you going to introduce God to himself? Does he not know he's majestic? That he's beautiful? He already knows. So what is the thing you have to truly say? We cannot deceive Baba. The Bible says the thoughts, the intents of the hearts of men are known to him. So why are you coming to him and treating him as if he's a small boy? When you know that you have been harassed every night. You have been a believer for 15 years. Ukubus, sukubus are still sleeping with you. You have not even had the humility in prayer to say, my God, what is the door that is opened in my life? Why am I being sexually harassed by demonic spirit? I refuse to eat or drink until my liberty comes. Where are the warriors? The day I just rebuke you small like this, you don't vanish. No strength. We are the believers that have greed, that know how to grind in spiritual matters, that quest for destiny at all costs. We are the people that understand the hand of mentorship, that understand what it took for Joshua to be the next leader. Where are you? Where are you? Before God, no truth. Before the word, no present. Listen to me. Don't let the next season make a mess of you. New beginnings, the message of new beginnings is not good news. New beginning can be anything, beginning of anything. But you see, if you can find Jesus embedded, no matter how the news is, you can have victory. If you find the streak of Christ in the midst of it. One of the first things about Christ is that anybody who came around him was delivered. Let me tell you, the places you need to stand upon, you need deliverance first. What use is gaining a victory and a high ground that you cannot keep? Are you with me? Press, I beg you, press. Pray, I beg you, pray. Enter into intercession, wake up in the dead of the night. This is not for somebody to hear, nobody cares. Men do not care, really. All they want to see are your works and victories. So enter the prayer for yourself. Melando kopasi krani matoza pai. Baba, this one life that I have, Shanto Pelekeze, I refuse to be food for the scorpion or food for the serpent. In Gambo Tokopai, my feet will not be used to propagate the gospel of the enemy. I know that I have been beaten, but Lord, take the venom out of me. I will not amend your vision or your instruction based on my pain and my fear. Give me perspective, oh God, raise my eyes so that I may see from where you see and judge as you judge. My life, my life, my life. Hey! If you cannot win your internal battle, you cannot win the external battles. You will just be a brand manager covering, covering, covering. 
to make yourself appear great when you know Sandoki Manteseveke. You cannot guarantee the future of your children because you have not made any covenant in the spirit realm. Ah, Pray, pray, pray. Why? Because in this new beginning, there are promises of God that we need to enter. And there is always a message for the new day. Find the message. Even in worship, there is a sound of the new day. There is an expression of God. There is a word of the Lord. It will leave people behind like film trick. The way rapture happened. That's the way things will be happening between now and the rapture. You just wake up and find out that your words don't have power again. You will sing, nothing will move. Because you are not in the new. But the promise of the new does not exclude you from the pains in the new. You will get the land. Doesn't mean you will not fight to get the land. Doesn't mean you will not pray. Doesn't mean you will not be attacked. But the land is yours. The last two things about the new beginning is that new beginnings are usually marked by mixed emotions. The Bible says that the two Marys, they ran to go and tell the message. It said, how did they run? They ran with joy and fear. <laughs> Have you seen that kind of thing before? Your leg is shaking, but you're advancing. Everybody say, are you mad? How dare you? You know, how dare you actually? But you are going, why? Because the Lord has reason. The resurrected Christ has sent you. As you are signing that check, your whole hand is wobbling. Mixed emotions. On one hand, you are promoted. On another hand, your child caught a disease. Mixed emotions. It's called the complexity of the new day. But we are called to master it. Because the spirit realm is about mastery. Let me tell you how I am with Satan. Have you seen? It's, it's like the life of Agberos. You know Agbero? Agbero? You've encountered one before? They do find them in places like inside, inside Lagos. Some do hang on the box when they are coming this way. Agberos, don't wait for you to complete the threat. You don't care how you go look them. Why they look me like that? No, no, why? No, wait, wait, wait. No, I go, I disappear fight. Uncle, I'm just inside my eyes. That's how I am with Satan. I don't give him chance. Because I studied his methodia. Satan has nothing good to offer. He presents many options, but the end thereof is death and destruction. Nothing good. I say nothing good. No matter how the thing is sweet in you. And you know that it's not only enjoyable things that sweet also. <laughs> Somebody did you bad. It is sweet in you to tell the story. It's sweet in you to explain how you are in pain. Are you hearing me? Uh, nothing good comes out of it. So before he, I, I would just declare three days fast. Why? Because I found out that my son is singing what a woman wants what a woman eh, 10 years old man to crane the facade shinda kapurians get her baba a sanka i will go and sign his priesthood document again in the spirit realm i don't go wait to open club 15 years later do you understand what i'm trying to say we're too reactive we have called it olden days christianity what is the meaning of olden days the Bible says the young men will see vision, the old men will dream dreams. Upon my handmaiden, everybody has a place in the kingdom. What's the meaning of olden days? Olden days, olden days, but the bet revivers, we are still crying for the trickles. Olden days, olden days, the miraculous was easy. They had angels in their house. Olden days, go back to it. Go back to it. Somebody asked me, have you read one book? I said, I don't read Bible, finish. Go back to it. 
Go back to the day somebody tell you, oh, oh my God, you say something funny, they're like, ah, dead. You tell them you are not dead in Jesus' name. You tell them, oh my God, when I saw it, I was losing my mind. You will not lose your mind by the power of the blood. Ah, P.I. is a bit too much. Oh, Shandevekai. The power to life and death is in the tongue. Now we know joke. Have you ever heard anywhere in the Bible where it says, and Michael cracked a joke and Jesus said, ha, ha, ha. Where did you see it in scripture? It is us that no joke. It is part of the fabric of our humanity. I'm not saying that Christ does not laugh. But I'm saying he does not joke with the things we joke with. I can assure you that you will not get to heaven. And Jesus will say, oh God, you are mad. You are mad. Silly guy. He that knows that he's the word. A life-giving spirit. We forget we are kings and gods. That's why we talk anyhow. The day a king sits down mistakenly say, ah, in fact, I just want to marry ten wives. You will see. They will go and bring him hundred virgins to try. The word of a king, power. You hear me say fast, you're like, ah, you know, Pierre, I don't really, it's not really my thing. It's not my thing either. It's not the day they gave birth to me, they invented fasting and prayer. But it's how I've come to meet this life. And because I want to have a place in eternity, I must do the works by which I crucify the flesh and ascend in the spirit. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Beat your flesh. Come on, look at your body and say, I'm going to beat you this year. I'm not joking, no. Look at the body. Tell it, I'm going to deal with you this year. You go see your bar for my hand. Beat the flesh into subjection. You want to get out to pray. Your whole body is doing anyhow. Stop sleeping with AC. The time when you were poor, you didn't have money. All you could buy was fan, but you couldn't buy electricity. That time you used to pray more now. Heat not they allow you to sleep well. When you are sweating up and down, you just wake up, God, my soul, friend, Maka. Shamba, ba, ba, ba. Because as you are pacing the room, small breeze go to blow you. So stop sleeping with air conditioner. No, you understand what I'm saying? Do anything. By all means necessary. By all means necessary. Sleep in the corner of your bed. Block the other side with pillows so that you know if they turn anyhow. Because there's a kind of space that is to permit laziness. I'm not lying. No, these things I'm telling you are true. Practical. There are things I do. All your lights to sleep. May you know if they sleep well. Nine o'clock, you still think it's 3 p.m. Why? You close curtain. Strong man with muzzle. What are you doing on your bed? Any born again Christian I see at the gym, or maybe you pass my office 12. P. I'm just heading to the gym. Ah, 12 p.m. You don't get work. Why? Is it nine duty? Oh, you don't do ninth duty. Okay, I can see how it makes sense. What are you doing? If you don't have work, come and help me work. Come and volunteer. Go and volunteer to be Pastor Moses' P. Don't work by all means. Work. Work is a culture. Work is a culture. As you do physical work, you become. You, I, like, hey, if I enter anybody's room, I see pants is hanging here. She means hanging there. Shoe is here. You cannot tell me you are a prayerful Christian. Discipline is discipline. An indisciplined man cannot be spiritually disciplined. Leave it like that. You cannot convince me otherwise. It's a spirit, it's a culture. Are we together? It's new beginning, no? That's why we're preaching new beginning things. Quest for the word. Quest for the life. As we pray, remember, new beginnings are always marked by circumcision. Circumcise on the eighth day, on the day of the new beginning. Circumcise not just yourself. But circumcised, it says, even those in your household that you pay with your money. Genesis 17, verse 11 to 14. Born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, but your driver, no, no, Jesus. 
Your nanny is an unbeliever. It's not me that said it. Genesis. He says, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Covenant, circumcision for covenant. And he that is eight days should old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generation, he that is born of the house or bought with money or any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must need to be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh an everlasting covenant and the circumcised man and child whose flesh of the foreskin is not circumcised that show shall be cut off from his people he had broken my covenant ah. so God you mean that this sweet security I experience in you by reason of the purging and the purification of my heart you mean it can be truncated if the ones in my house are not circumcised some of us are born again, but our businesses are unbelievers. When it comes to that, so you say, Pimo, you know now, this is business. You know the way we're doing sometimes business, you know. Every now and then, you just have to, you know. Why? He says everything that is bought with your money. Everything that is bought with your money. Whether it be staff that you pray, preach to them. The more that live with you and surround you that are pulled, into this revelation and covenant, the more secured you are in the Lord. Circumcision of the heart, the spirit, the soul, consistently questing, asking the Lord, delving, repenting, praying, applying the blood into every corner. Teach it to your children. Teach it to your helpers. Teach it to everyone around you. Teach it. Make it a culture. Rise to your feet. Let me pray with you. Ladosa pekeli. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Samparunde le melahai. Dando kopei zavilande vlehe. Shalamanto rugazei da karanda sepalia. Efando, efando, efando. Fale, fale, fali la brahando sofrehira hai. Just raise your hand to Jesus this morning. Oh, begin to declare again his lordship over you. If while I was preaching, there was something he laid on your heart. And you said, ah, am I really ready to engage the new season? Pray about it now. Pray 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 about it, Lord Jesus. Moria Kazovelete. Sun Kariba Sufre and Telepai. You are the God that receives the first fruit. You are the God that receives the first of my life. My first emotions. My first plans. My first revenue. My first expectations and hope. My first desires. My first cravings. Everything God I give to you. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to pray this prayer and I want you to talk to the Lord and say God I have known you before but I want to know you again. I have known you by a name in the previous season but I want to know the name by which I should know you in this season. Ask the Lord. Father reveal yourself to me. Father, reveal yourself to me. Because every time you reveal yourself, Lord, it is as though you open a new terrain in the spirit within which I can engage, within which I can work and run. Give me a fresh understanding of yourself for every name that you introduced, the patriarchs of old that you introduced yourself as, that became the expression of their anointing. So God, introduce yourself to me. Jesus, show me new things about you that I did not know. Give life back to my prayer life. Give me a new kind of joy and hunger to study your word. Make me a Christian again that wants to fast, that wants to cry out to you. Break the bone of carnality, pieces, the structures of darkness. By which Satan has held me bound all this month. 
my God will introduce yourself to me. No matter what I have elevated in my heart and I have esteemed in my heart, whether it be good things or bad things, and I have given it your throne and I have made it seem like Lord, but I dethrone it by the power of your blood. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Break the darkness on the inside of me. Let the light of revelation by the power of the Holy Ghost let it break through the crevices of my inner man. Let it pierce through the dimension of my soul and spirit until Christ is formed in me. Until every chamber of my inner man receives Jesus. I declare holy war on my inside. I declare holy war in my soul. Take away from me that carnality that makes me make excuses when I fall short. My God, give me a heart that is humble towards your word. Give me a heart that is humble towards your word. Teach me once again how to repent, Jesus. I have become too strong. I have become too strong, my God. Show me again how to repent. Give me a broken and a contrite spirit. Give me a broken and a contrite heart. Give me a broken and a contrite heart. Give me a broken and a contrite heart. My God, have mercy on me. In your mercy, take pride away from me. In your mercy, take fear away from me. In your mercy, take shame away from me. In your mercy, give me the right perspective. Alena Kanda so Ala Kante ya Basom Barate Kadeso Kopiakai in Domerede Basande Kapai in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Ah, the Bible says it is Him that teaches your hand to war and your fingers to fight. He is the master of your hand. Raise your hand to God and say, God, teach my hand warfare. Ah, teach my hand warfare. Systems raise themselves in industries to rise up against you and your holy one. But may I not be a spectator, but teach my hand to make war, teach my fingers to craft weapons of warfare in the spirit, in economy, in worship, in every area. Teach me, oh God, how to be your battle axe. Come and make that prayer. Raise your hand to God. Ask him, Baba, instruct me in the art of war. Instruct me in the art of war. Because I know that every new beginning is marked by warfare. Every new territory is taken by warfare. May the blood of my sword and the blood of my boots be the blood of my enemy, not my blood. Teach me warfare. Teach me the terrains of warfare. Teach me the days of warfare. Teach me the equipment of warfare. Show me the strategies of warfare. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lastly, tell the Lord. Father, in 2023, I want to be your man. Hey, there is a price, oh, there is a price. But the price is greater than the price. Tell him, God, I want to be your man. Open my eyes, cause me to see. Raise me to the plane of godliness. That I may speak like you, evaluate like you, decide like you. 
Anything you need to remove, remove. But this year, I want to be your man. Give me the courage that I need to walk with you. For who can journey with the divine one that is burning with fire, except such a man carries fire himself? Make me your man. Make me your man. Make me your man. Enoch walked with you and he was not. Noah walked with you and he was mocked. But God, make me your man. Make me your person in this season. Make me enjoy prayer. Make me at peace with holy conversations. My God, make me your man. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. For everybody here who is in business, can you just raise your hand? Father, let me salika. Because I perceive, Lord, that you are releasing a fresh anointing upon businesses and entrepreneurs to be able to take the terrain of 2023. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, let it blow upon them. Let it fall upon them. The fire of creativity and innovation. The courage and the boldness to step out and to execute the fire of consecration. Let it come upon them. Lord, these ones, let them be kept. Let them be a seed by which you can bring forth a harvest of holy men who serve you, who do business with you, and business with the world. And they change the world, the business world physically into the kingdom of our God. Take them, teach them, use them, instruct them, fill their dreams and visions with ideas, innovations, and give them the heart of stewardship in Jesus' name. As the Lord blesses you this year, remember this house, remember your priests, your pastors. Remember, remember your pastor. Don't ever let the one who watches over you in spiritual things to hunger and cry out to God. It is wrong. It is anti-Christ for the church to be that way. As the Lord blesses you, ask the Lord to teach you again. Go back to your Bible, read it. Don't join, don't get your instructions from social media. Read scriptures. When God blessed men of old, what did they do with their wealth? How did they take care of God's house? Remember the house that waters you. Father, we pray for everybody else. Father, we thank you because we are all under your guardianship. Father, the words we've heard, do not let it and steal it. The Bible says he comes like a bed and steals it. That means Satan waits for our revelation to know what to do next. So he steals the revelation from the pulpit to go and strategize and he takes it from you. So Baba, we catch everything you have released here today. It is ours. We plant it in our spirit. We hide it from hell. It shall not be lost to us, but we shall manifest it by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God praise. Find me now where you